1970s come alive Through this memory box we've known With country tunes and vintage scenes We'll take you back in time To a simpler place where love and melodies intertwine One, in the 1930s, girls wore pleated skirts, cashmere sweaters, circle pins, penny loafers, knee socks, and ponytails. Two, moving on to the 1940s, the fashion shifted to super tight skirts, pointy bras, cardigans worn backwards, Doris Day kerchiefs, and ankle bracelets. Three, by the 1950s, teens were rolling up their jeans, wearing baggy sweaters, hand-sewn loafers, bobby socks, saddle shoes, and fraternity pins. 4. In the 1960s, the style changed to ducktail haircuts, James Dean jackets, t-shirts with rolled-up sleeves, pegged chinos or jeans, and pointed-toe shoes with Cuban heels. 5. The 1970s brought a new look with villager cardigans, McMullen blouses, pleated skirts, legions, plastic clothespins at the throat, and bubble hairdos. 6. Then came the era of jeans, work shirts, construction boots, and long, messy hair. 7. In the 1970s, teens were wearing jeans, hookapoo blouses, birth shoes, and Sinandra haircuts. 8. The 1970s also saw the popularity of white bucks, argyle socks, chinos, and plaid sports coats. 9. And finally, in the 1970s, the fashion included circular felt skirts with pink poodles, angora sweaters, collars with pom-poms, and pink capizios to match the sweater. It's interesting to note that these fashion trends can often be used to identify a person's age, social status, and academic achievement in high school. Over the past 35 years, high school has become a significant milestone in the transition from childhood to adulthood in American society. It's a time when teenagers start to show their preferences for college, blue-collar work, or the arts through their fashion choices. During the last 30 years, students could often be categorized into three groups based on their clothing, preppies, hoods, and bohemians. Each group believed they were superior to the others. The pressure to fit in is a major part of high school life. Once you choose a group to belong to, it's expected that you'll dress accordingly. Some students even pretend to be part of a different group to avoid standing out. As people move on to college or start working, their fashion choices may change. The transition from adolescence to adulthood used to be more clearly defined, but as more people started attending high school and college, the age at which people started dressing like adults became younger. In the 1930s, teenagers began to develop their own unique fashion styles as a way to distinguish themselves from their parents' generation. This marked the beginning of the evolution of teen fashion. Teen fashion underwent significant changes from the 1930s through the 1970s. Initially, the emergence of jitterbugs and their unique style was met with skepticism and disapproval. The media and medical experts warned against the effects of new shoe styles on adolescent feet, predicting fallen arches for all. However, the Bobby Soxer look became established during World War II, with even nice kids adopting the style. The influx of money from defense factories into middle-class adolescent clothing budgets allowed for the widespread adoption of this fashion trend. This shift in fashion was shocking to Europeans, who were much later in discovering the concept of a teenager. British teachers visiting the United States were warned about the emphasis on dress and cosmetics in the lives of American schoolgirls. The sloppy look, popularized by Eastern girls' colleges, became a trend among rich girls who wanted to appear bohemian before settling into traditional roles. This look was carefully assembled, with specific rules for the pairing of shoes and socks. The trend spread to the Midwest, where teenage girls wore their fathers' shirts over jeans, but jeans were not accepted in the classroom. 
Classroom styles in the mid-40s included pleated or tailored skirts, short or long probes, and a variety of sweaters. The in hairdo was a page boy that evolved into a peekaboo style. Despite the evolution of fashion, some elements remained constant, such as the use of bobby pins being considered out. Teen fashion underwent significant changes from the 1930s through the 1970s. In the 1930s, casual looks included the peasant blouse with the broomstick skirt, as well as tube tops and halters for summer. Regional fads included white muslin beer jackets and nail polish used for decorating, such as painting a boyfriend's tooth blood red to be worn on a chain. In the late 1940s, a new look emerged, with hoods wearing bleached dungarees that were eventually banned from schools. Preppy boys adopted the Ivy League look, while educators believed that behavior followed dress and tried to make everyone dress preppy to change their personalities. The 1950s saw an explosion of fads, with middle-class kids having money to spend and manufacturers providing the latest gimmicks. Clothes became conspicuously cute or ugly, with crinoline skirts, pink poodles, and rhinestones. Greaser girls set themselves apart with tighter skirts and sweaters, while preppy girls wore ponytails and their boyfriends preferred short hair. The 1960s brought the bubble hairdo and a decade of huge brush rollers, while Catcher in the Rye became a teenage classic. By the 1970s, teen fashion had evolved significantly, reflecting the changing cultural and social landscape of the time. In the 1930s through the 1970s, teen fashions went through significant changes. Some teens were influenced by beatnik culture, inspired by figures like Jack Kerouac and Allen Ginsberg. They stood out in a world of neat and tidy Eisenhower era fashion, but school dress codes kept them in check. Meanwhile, preppy teens adhered to their own strict fashion standards. Sorority girls would dress in coordinated outfits once a week, setting the trend for others to follow. Some even traveled to different towns to find the right stores for their fashion needs. By 1960, bobby socks went out of style, replaced by knee socks or hose with base regions. Saddle shoes and greaser styles also faded away, as teens sought new ways to express their individuality, often through elaborate hairstyles. The Beatles' influence in 1964 revolutionized men's hairstyles, while the Carnaby Street craze led to changes in women's fashion, with skirts getting shorter and becoming a target of school dress codes. At one high school, skirts were measured with a ruler, and if they were more than four inches above the knee, a white hem was added. In another school, girls were asked to kneel, and if their skirts didn't touch the ground, they were sent home. Makeup became darker and more dramatic, with a raccoon-like look becoming popular. After-school dresses took on the Chelsea girl style, and granny dresses briefly flourished in the mid-1960s. The youth craze swept through America, with middle-aged women dressing like Chelsea girls and advertising executives trying to emulate the mod look of Paul McCartney. Teenagers quickly found a new look after adults took away their old one. By 1967, college campuses were seeing the rise of SDS chapters and early war protesters wearing fatigues. The drug culture was influencing fashion, with hippies wearing jeans, t-shirts, ethnic tops, and antique clothes. The counterculture look was first embraced by the avant-garde and didn't become widespread in high schools until 1970. Between 1968 and 1970, preppy kids resisted the change, but everything shifted in the summer of 1970, especially after the events at Kent State. In 1968, people at the State University in Albany would judge you based on what you wore, assuming you were voting for Nixon if you wore a skirt. By 1970, the uniform seen everywhere was jeans, work shirts, fry boots or sandals, and long hair. Protesting became socially acceptable, and the pressure to conform to the new uniform was strong, even for those who didn't necessarily oppose the war. T 
Teenagers have always felt the pressure to conform to a standard uniform, and in the early 1970s, it was no different. Poor kids who wanted to look like preppies had the hardest time. Today, the uniform for teenagers is jeans and a nice shirt, with different brands and styles depending on social class. The sloppy look of the early 70s has given way to a more well-groomed style, especially for preppies. Despite thinking they are dressing distinctively, teenagers are often surprised to learn that their fashion choices have historical roots. However, there are still pockets of teenagers embracing retro styles, such as greasers with leather jackets and 1950s-style cars. It seems like fashion has come full circle, with some styles from the past making a comeback.